Welcome to Don't Stand on the Footrest. I'm Derek Lynch, and today I'm with Jesse Diaz of Fortune Cat Barbershop in Denver, Colorado, and Matt McConnell of Honest Barber and Little Barber here in Austin, Texas. Hope you enjoy. I'm Matt McConnell. I own Honest Barber and Little Barber. Um, graduated from barber school and got my license in 2013. My wife and I started, started barbering out of school. Things were great some days, terrible others, right? Like yeah. kept, kept moving up, uh, kept moving forward, I should say. Tried to figure it out. Um, worked at eight different shops before I opened mine. Um, All out here, or was it? No, sorry, I, Mass, yeah, I, I, yeah, I got my license in Massachusetts. Um, let's see if I can let me say that I worked at five in Massachusetts and three out here. And then number nine would have been Honest Barber. Yeah. So, um, which was by design to a certain extent, right? Yeah. It's like, I wanted to, like, I was old enough when I went to barber school to know that I was like, that I didn't know everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? I think at a certain age, I started to recognize that, like, there's things to learn. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that I'm not the smartest man in the room every time I walk into that room. Right? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what made me, you know, that's poor parent. I'm going to chalk that up to poor parenting. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's nice when you work in like a bunch of different shops, you see little things from each, good yeah. and bad, you know what I mean? And you kind of just collect all that data. And then when it's time to open up your own spot, you know what works well, what didn't work, what may work well for you, what didn't work well for you. Just kind of, I don't know. It's it, all just like a, it kind of just encompasses all of our experiences in the industry. Yeah. And you can see so much of that in like everyone's projects. It's like, oh, I see because, you know, Jesse worked here. I see that little bit here in that part of the shop and same with you. It's like, I don't know. I think it's really cool. A oh, 100%. Like I, it would be fun to see my old bosses or shop owners come yeah. to my shop and yeah. be like, yeah, I see you. Yeah. Right? The influence they is would, there. 100%. Yeah. Right. Like I mm -hmm. owe all the success in my shops are owed to those before me. Right? Oh, totally. And it's just like, I, I knew as soon as I graduated barber school, there was a place for my, for what I wanted to do. Yeah. It was just a matter of me gaining the experience to feel like, yeah. I deserve to open a shop, right? Yeah. I know, and then, yeah, just, we we decided to make a move out here. We did, like, the, the Hipster National Tour, went to Nashville, Asheville, Raleigh-Durham, uh, Wilmington, Sacramento. We had been to Austin a couple times, and it was pretty easy to make the choice to come here. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had lived in Denver, where you guys are coming mm -hmm. from, for, like, eight years. And that was on the list of places, but my wife did not want to go anywhere with winter. Um, so, we, uh, so we landed here and just... I worked at a great shop for a little over a year called The Grand and met some awesome dudes there and then went to another shop called Avenue in town, which is amazing. And that's when I like through like just a process, right? Sort of really said to myself, like now's my time to do it. Right. And the, that, that first shop was up for sale and it didn't work out for whatever reason, but I had gotten a bunch of money together with a business partner who's now my ex business partner. But, um, and we just, you know, opened the shop, and it like it wasn't like it hit the ground running, right? Yeah. Like I, you know how it goes. It's like your mm -hmm. your blood, sweat, and tears go into that yeah. thing, and one day it kind of becomes something. So. Yeah. What made you like? How did you know when you wanted to open a shop? Was that something day one? Went into barber school knowing that? Because I mean, it's not like you and Nick kind of like knew, right? Yeah. It's like that was like your dream. You know yeah. what I mean? So you knew that early on, but like, did you know? Like, when did you know? Because there's a lot of guys that just like. I don't want to say fall into it, but they never really expected or planned for that. And then yeah. they here they are opening a shop, and then several more down the road, and this huge success. And I don't think they like necessarily planned for it, but no, I, I would say um, I I have an entrepreneurial sort of like spirit. Yeah, is is how I'd always describe it. And I've air quotes opened a yeah. lot of businesses yeah, in yeah. the past, right, ranging from just like. Because, like, I was coming up in my early 20s and, like, early 2000s, right? And, like, the dot-com boom was, yeah. like, my formative years uh, when it comes to that. And, I, like, I was like, well, of course I'm going to be a billionaire, right? Like, yeah, just of course. You, <laughs> you, you buy a domain and then you're a billionaire, right? So, you know, did, did some fun stuff like that. Like, we had a lot of fun in Denver. My buddy and I were kind of, like, we did, like, a promotion business that was yeah. really just us throwing parties at bars. Yeah. Right? Which was, it was awesome. Yeah. Um, but anyways, my entrepreneurial spirit and, and like barbering just like fit, right? Yeah. It was like I had the experience of cutting hair and then knew that the next step was just become 
a business owner. haircut by my dad was I was standing in the in the in the kitchen and my mom was like you really want that haircut and I was like yeah and I like wanted the skater cut you know like my hair was long on top and I wanted oh, yeah. the side shave and I was like can you take my, my my mom's stylist was named Jaton and she looked like the chick who was trying to steal the wedding singer away in uh, the wedding singer we are we talking like early 90s er- Tony Hawk or like the young Hitler like early like mid oh like young Tony Hawk yeah okay. like young Tony Hawk bowl cut, bowl cut. and and she's Brad like, from home improvement yeah so, uh, <laughs> the, what was the, what was the Brad Pitt fucking um, oh the fury haircut fury, yeah, yeah the yeah. fury haircut I, I didn't know that was like the skater cut no, 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 no. Tony Hawk got it but all I just hear is from the from the garage is like muffled <laughs> And I get up, I'm like, oh my god, what's going on in there? My dad opens the door, and our our cockapoo honey comes flying out of the garage, covered in nicks, buzzed down to the freaking skin. And my dad's all, you're next. And I was like, oh fuck, maybe I don't want this haircut anymore. <laughs> you, that moment though, do you think that was like formative to you becoming a barber? Do you ever think of like, well, I think you noticing with intent the like actual hair. Just- well, my mom was just always like, dude, you like fix like hair all the time like with stuff like what she'd be like I'd be like mm, that hair over there or like I'd be like I'd be like I like that dude's hair like you know dudes that have like big pumps and shit like that I was always always into hair like I'm like yeah like, well it was like everything that tied it together my grandpa was from the you know 40s and 50s so he like dressed that way and he carried his life out that way so like when I saw that and I was like damn like that like grandpa would say that's like slick yeah. and then eventually like it kind of just started like where I gave a shit about my hair a lot but it wasn't like overly done. I'm just like, I want healthy hair and I want this hairstyle. That's what I mean. It's like, and I, I think it whispers to us. I think our, yeah. like the hair career people, like, sure, there may be some people out there that like, I always wanted to do that. But yeah. I wasn't that guy. Like, I, I have a marketing degree, right? Yeah. Like, I thought I was going to go off and like do big corporate things. Yeah. Like, I worked at Charles Schwab in Colorado, yeah. right? And like, but I was always down. Like, I, I'm always been messing with my hair. Yeah. What and was your like, like tipping point? What was it like? When you're like, okay, I'm going to go to barber school. Like, what was the one thing? Or was there like, yeah, did it take time or was it, because I can think back to mine and it was almost like a day of figuring it out. But yeah. some people it's like, it takes a while. For sure. No, I, I got fired from a job and like, I had always bartended. Yeah, like, too. Kind of as a side So hustle. many barbers used to be bartenders. Right. Or like servers or just like in service, right? Like, yep. like the, the, ch- the chatty mechanism I think is important. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, whether whether you have it or not, it's not probably indicative of your like success. Yeah. But I feel like a connection with somebody, you know, helps you become probably more successful than your skill yeah. reflects. Because you have listening yeah. skills. Right. Like, like you, you're able to deliver the service a lot better. The people that can't communicate very well, um, I feel like struggle with that. Right. It's, yeah. The consultation's everything, and how do you? How do you get something out of somebody that doesn't know what they want or how to describe it, but through good conversation skills and listening, you can get it out of them and make sure that they're satisfied and happy when they leave. Doesn't it feel like every single barber out there is trying to be the best barber right. in air quotes, right? right? Like everyone's fighting over that like highest skill trophy yeah. where it's like, that's a really hard like thing to live up to. Yeah. And also to like, I mean, if you're not going to talk about it, like who's going to know? Yeah, yeah, right. Like your your gram doesn't matter to anybody except for other barbers. Yeah, right. Like clients, like my clients don't even know to use Instagram to yeah. find barbers. Right. Like, At the most, yeah. they'll use it for a portfolio. Like I always tell people, like some of our newer hires, I always tell them, like people use it as a single small tool in the bigger bigger like thing of trying to find a shop. So they'll look at. Location wise, what's near me? Okay, mm-hmm. then they're gonna look at Google reviews. They're gonna look at the website, legitimize that. If it's some shitty one page, well, I think it's one page is fine. But if it's again, they're gonna look at like the professionalism of that, and especially if you're at a higher price point, they're gonna they're gonna check all these boxes. Like, what, do they have any red flags? And I think the Instagram might be part of that for like millennials is like looking. Oh, they do have an Instagram. Okay, I guess it's a green flag. What does it look like? And if it's just tiled semi well. And they are up to ish date, and they make posts, and the last post is from 2013. <laughs> and they see some haircuts. They're like, "Oh man, well, I don't know what barber to go to, or do I go to a senior barber, a barber, or a junior barber? What, like, what do I want?" They can kind of go like, "Oh well, Brendan did this awesome like mid length, dude. I think that's what I want to do with my hair and grow it out. I'm gonna start going to him." So there, it might help funnel people into the right area, but 
it's not nobody uses it as like the first step of it. it if anything it just validates what they're already thinking you know there's an ecosystem we're building right? yeah. and yeah. like if you make that appealing and easy enough yeah. to integrate into from a client point of view yeah they're just gonna come yeah right? and like Given the quality of this table, we're probably going to do like 95% of those haircuts well like yeah. in our shop and yeah. at this table. Um, and the other 5%, you can't, you can't you can't win them all, right? Like yeah. you get them next time. Some people are going to leave that one star review. Worst experience ever, worst haircut ever, things like yeah. that. And it's like, it's a bummer, right? Because yeah. no barber wakes up in the morning being like, I cannot wait to fuck this guy up. Yeah, <laughs> I am going to fuck up the first guy that sits in my chair today. And yeah. no client wakes up trying to ruin a barber's day either. Right, right. Like, right. It's just not how life works. But like... Yeah. You know, sometimes those those roads intersect a little yeah. bit. Yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah, like, like, yeah. And we both end up, we all end up on the the losing side of that. Yeah. Good news is, it's not a tattoo. Yeah. Right? Like, it grows back. Yeah. Um, you know, because we all have that like that wild client that's just oh, like yeah. so picky. Yeah. And like somehow. We have become their huckleberry, their ride or die. Right. right. Yeah, and you're like, why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, why me? Yeah. But simultaneously, like some of those guys now to me are like my favorites. Yeah. Right? Like yep. they were really like a pain. You grow to love them. Yeah. <laughs> like I see them and I'm like, oh yeah, this guy's like, and some of them know and they compensate you accordingly, right? Yeah. Like, or they're just misunderstood. Sometimes it takes a while to like, yeah, get to know why they might be a little off putting or a little this or a little that. And then once you kind of know, or you kind of just like know more about them, you're like, yeah. makes sense, and this is a perfect fit. But but you asked about the um, like, how did we end up here? How did we end yeah, up like, here too? Right? It's like you got that like the social component, and then to me, um, I lost a job, got fired for yeah. all the right reasons. Right, this is like on my path to sobriety. Right, uh, but I still wasn't ready to accept responsibility for any of that. Yeah. So I was still yeah. like just a degenerate, mm -hmm. which also. The lovely part of being a barber, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, this industry is loaded with fun, degenerative people that are all mean well. Right, right. right. Yeah. Like, um, but anyways, like, my my wife's like, you need to get a haircut. Because at the time, I had pretty wild hair. Yeah. And uh, so I go to this barber shop. It was like a Tuesday in uh, Massachusetts of, like, February. And Razor's Barbershop in Somerville, it's still there. And I go in there, and it's just, like, packed. Tuesday yeah. afternoon, right? Yeah. With, like... Some pretty hip looking dudes, and I'm just like, what is going on? Yeah. Like, my last time at a barbershop was like when I was a kid, and yeah. like, you know, Mel is like, got his palm on my head, just like gripping it like a fucking the bowling like, ball. Like, he's gonna dump me, yeah. yeah, he's gonna <laughs> dump me soon. And he just like bangs out my haircut and sends me out the door with yeah. like a headache. Yeah, Dude, that's um, freaking awesome. <laughs> and then I show up there, and it's just like, these guys are awesome, skilled, and I was. I was a straight razor shaving enthusiast at the time, too. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I got a straight razor shave, and it was just an awesome experience. And I was like, what is going on here? This yeah. is fascinating. And I'm not, I'm not shitting you guys. Like, I went home. I started Googling barbers and what, what's going on in the barber world and barbering. And, of course, came across Scorum. Yeah. Because this is yeah. 2013. They, yep. Yep. they had been on hit for a little over a year, probably. I think yeah. they were, their ship came in in, like, 11, 12-ish. Yeah. And... Uh, just like, I was in barber school like a week later. Like, there was one right around the corner from my house. Yeah. That was no lie, right? Like, and I went over there and I was like, dude, I'm going to be the king of this castle, right? Yeah. I, I was like, it was like, it's all like, we're, you walk into barber school and nine times out of ten, it is just not, you know, it's not the cream of the crop of society. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, half of them are like ex cons. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're all cut from that same cloth. Yeah. In one way or another, but like you're like, man, this this industry needs solid, foundationally sound humans in it. Yeah, right? yeah. To help usher us into another generation, because like yeah. a lot of us are just like whatever way the wind blows. Yeah. You know, they're just trying to make a couple bucks, not realizing like, dude, if you settle in and do good work and take it seriously, yeah, you make a really good living. Yeah. And a really comfortable. Very, like, living, fulfilling, right? too. Like, yeah. when you were saying the thing about the talking, dude, I was fucking awful when I started cutting hair, bro. Like, bad, bad. I had no training. And my, my barber school, for the, in the, the beginning phases, like, we're, like, lacking in teachers. We had no window exposure to our barber shop. We were on the third, second floor of, of a building in the middle of, like, jam-packed downtown. You don't know there's a barber shop there. And so, like, 
when I got cut loose, like I didn't, I had like very, very loose idea of what was going on. And I was like, I'm fucking freaking out, dude. How do I get out of this? Yeah. I'm like, well, you can talk pretty good. And like, honestly, that's like when I was able to like not worry about being quiet and like giving them the like quiet, perfect thing. I started chatting. I started telling them about my, like, my journey, how I got sober, like how this stuff. And I just started like, it's kind of like not spilling my guts in the sense of like giving them like the lurid details of like my drug and alcohol use. But I just was like, yeah, man, I was, you know, doing really bad. Yeah. They can figure and it I, out. I just, I, you can figure it out. I'm not a bartender anymore. So I'm guessing you know where the fuck that went. <laughs> but my ability to talk was more than my shitty haircuts. And so people would come to hang out and chat with me and get my shitty haircuts. But then I'm like, okay, we're on number two now. You can't fuck this up. So that like forced me because like now I'm like, they're really nice people and they know your name. You know, like they asked for you. And then that was when I was like, he's a really good dude. That's like a hardworking dad. And like, you know, he loves like going to clubs on the, on like Friday nights, like to go like listen to music. You like gain that like trust with them. And then you start caring about them. And then I was like, well, I need to start caring too. And like, that's when I was like, you need to stop resting on the ability that you can chat with someone and work on where you need to be and have those two meet in. And I, Dude, that's, that's a great, like, like yeah. that, that was like the part of me where I like, I heard Shane Nesbitt say that in an, in an interview one time. He's like, they were asking him about apprentices or people that weren't like up to par with him. And he's like, I will always take time if people want them, but I don't want a good hair cutter to come work at my shop. He's like, I want a good person to come. I'll teach them how to cut hair like that. But he's like, a good barber doesn't give good faith. A good barber has people smiling and coming back at regardless. And like that, like when I heard that, it was just kind of like that that little knob that I was like, you're doing, you know, you ask yourself, like you actually heard it. Am I fucking doing the right thing here? And when when like somebody who's been doing it for 15 years says like, I don't give a shit if you can cut hair around anybody. Like you're still a shitty barber if the person never comes back to say that, right? It's like, it's more important how they look and feel when they leave and the education you gave them on how to style their hair and like set them up with good products and all this stuff. That's what gets them coming back. I think like a, what a, what I when I did that interview for the the little Voyage magazine. Yeah, yeah. And they were they were asking uh, how do you choose people to work or how do you choose uh, a, a mentor? Like how do you choose people that you want to work and like be involved with? And I was like, I find people that I want to celebrate because if you celebrate what they're doing and you're amongst them, you're the next one up. You know, like how can you say that you want to do something? And it only be you, like, if I were to be like, yeah, I fucking built Fortune Count on my own blood, sweat, and tears, like, these fucking raggedy assholes over here were just along for the ride, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, dude. Like, one guy asked me, he's like, dude, Clay's a good haircutter. I was like, he's way better than I am. And he goes, does that bother you? And I was like, why the fuck would that bother me, dude? Like, he's, go to him. If you like his haircuts, go to him. It's going to make me want to get better, dude. Like, and also, it, like, it puts a fire under my ass, but it's also like, fuck yeah, that dude works here. You know, like. That's, I think, like, the big key is to, like, celebrate the people that you work with and, like, give them what they need, like, as far as that goes, and then they're going to work their ass off for you. Like, that's, like, what being a good chatter is. Like, that's, like, ju- not just the haircut. You know, like, when you can see somebody that, like, is, like, working to, like, get somewhere, dude, I'll get on board with that. Well, it's like the egotistical guy is always going to be the best person in the room. Yeah. But the egotistical guy is usually the biggest dipshit in the room, too. Because yeah. surround yourself with people that are better than you, and you're naturally going to be elevated. Yeah. It, it's, it's a team effort, right? Yeah, it's like, dude. why why be the best person in the room? Like, Why what? would somebody want to be good to you? You ever, like, you ever hear the, the quote, like, if you're the smartest man in the room, you're in the wrong room? Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that is never more true than in yeah, cutting. Right? 100%. It's like, all these guys, like, if, if you're really fortunate, like, I feel like my room, like, the, the guys are all trying to improve, right? Like mm-hmm. nobody seems to be just like full blown resting on their laurels. They, yeah. They've peaked. Yeah. Like they all seem to be trying yeah. to like just improve on something. Sure. Yeah. No, absolutely, man. So when did you open? Honest Barber. Okay, so Honest one. opened in 2019, February of 19. Um, and, you know, COVID was exactly a year later. Like, yeah. COVID and my ex-business partner leaving happened, like, right around the exact yeah. same time. He left in January, and then like, COVID left in, or COVID happened, like, February. Yeah. And we closed, like, or, I'm sorry, we closed March 19th here. Mm-hmm. When did you guys close? I think it was, like, almost to the day. It was, like, March, March 13th day. was, I think, was the day that, that, like, that everything was all 
guy. It was either 13th, 15th, or 19th. Because I remember we, we opened exactly two months after that date. We, we closed, actually, a few days before the government forced us to. We thought, like, oh, 15 days, flat the curve. Like, we'll, like, set an example for other local business, right? And then we did that. And then yeah. a few days later, like, oh, yeah. You're going to be closed for a while. And we're like, oh, 15 days, whatever. And then it was like two months later. And then we waited for everyone else to open up and see how that went for a couple of days. And then I hit up some owners like, how to go? Were clients weird? Like everything. Then we opened up. But I remember it was exactly two, two months of the day. There was a moment where I like resigned. I was like, well, I guess this is it, right? I guess I'm going out of business because there's what else is there, right? And that resignation gave me such relief. And like now that I've experienced that feeling of just like, well, I guess it's over. Yeah. And it wasn't. Like, I don't know if I can ever, like, feel real bad about any direction I go, right? Yeah. Like, the, the shops will always sort of, like, have a really, like, I feel like I'm working on borrowed time right now anyway. Yeah, like, like, like you're just grateful sense. that you still have everything and, like, we're all still cooking and doing our thing. Yeah. And I don't know. With this type of shit, you just, you have people depend on you, so you can't give up. So you just, like, suck it up and get it done. And in that fight, you sometimes are, like, you look back on a few years ago and you're like, yeah. How did I think that that was a safe play? Dude, but I you think, don't know what you don't know. I think that success is equal parts like it's equal parts like ambition, can do attitude, and stupidity, to be honest yeah. with you. Like, you, you gotta have be. to be a little bit yeah. blind. Right? Like, and you gotta be able to take any, risks. Yeah, yeah, any relationship, like, you gotta be a little bit blind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. I mean, like, it, well, you know, like, it's always like the stupid saying high risk, high reward. Right. I mean, like, that's kind of just how I work. Yeah. It's either like no or go. Yeah. And I think that like, I was scared enough that it like, it freaked me out enough to be like, you need to fucking do it. Like, I think that was like, it was like, I was like, you need to like do something with yourself to where you're not just like playing it safe all the time. You know, it was like, I think it's super easy. Like you get in your mode and you're, and I was like, for a while, even too, I was like, would it be really that bad to like go work for somebody? Like, would it be that bad? Dude, you know, what's so weird right now is like the three of us around the table. We have like successful barbershops, right? Mm -hmm. If one of the guys that work there, guys or girls that work there, were like, hey, do you want to buy this? They'd be like, oh, man, I don't know. It's a lot of risk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they would look at a functioning, successful barbershop that's already yeah. good and up and running and be, like, scared of it. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But that's where all the creativity, all I think, right? comes from in a way. Like, there's so many cool things that happen that those, like, happy mistakes. Shout out to yeah. Bob Ross. But it's, like, those things are what make it unique. And when you don't, when you see something executed absolutely flawlessly, perfectly, there's no personality. And I can think of a lot of chains that probably had the creative like fuck ups and fixed it. And like, it became a cool little thing about them yeah. that mm -hmm. they have eradicated because it was viewed as a weakness or not done correctly or not polished or whatever. And then they found their formula and it's just copy and paste and copy and paste. And to the point where it's so sterile, it just sucks. And it's like yeah. some of those mistakes that you make, those micro mistakes, I was all about that our first couple of years. I was like, I'm going to try these things that I think will work, but I'm going to just gather data. They're here to test. They're not going to bankrupt the company if they don't work out. But it's like, I'm doing this to see what happens, not to get it necessarily successful. I want to see if it is successful, why it was successful or what parts of it were successful or not successful. And you make those little calculated risks, trying to like figure your shit out. Whereas... I know a lot of people that don't take those risks and I feel like they just never really grow. You know, it's like, I didn't go to business school. I didn't pay for college. This is my college. Mm -hmm. This is, I have to now spend money that I earned to make little mistakes to learn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't pay, I don't even know how much college costs, but I didn't pay all that shit. I'm not in debt because of it. So now is my time to like, now I spend that money through experience. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, dude, I, I think, I think all barbers should either. It's kind of like when you tell somebody, dude, you should wait tables because you're an asshole, you know, like that kind of stuff. But I don't, I'm not saying like everybody's an asshole, but like, you know, like when you, when you, even when you, even if waiting tables isn't your thing, yeah, you know, like you see it and you're like, fuck this. I don't want to do this. Like that motivates you. Yeah. But also like, but barbering, like, I feel like you do like the only way to do things right is you have to fuck them up first because everything you have to know, like, I don't want to do that because of this. Yeah. I don't want this to happen because of this. And like you said, you gain knowledge from that. So like, like you said, you're kind of always learning. You're like always drawing off of that. But I think that like when you own it and it's yours, like you said, it's a different outlook. Yeah. Because it's like, if you don't do your job, like you said, those five dudes yeah. have to go find somewhere else to live. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've had conversations with them, especially when we first opened 
that there's things that like as a friend might bum them out. You know, we opened with like my my closest friends, sure. arguably my only fucking friends, which is sad. But things right, guys are sticking by my side. <laughs> but you know, it's there was times where I was like. I, I talk about Rosemont like it was a living person because it is in a way. And there was times where I was just like, look, I'm trying to do what the best, the best is for you guys. But I also have to take into account what is the best for Rosemont. And they, there's a lot of things that will live simultaneously and like symbiotically and yeah. what helps that helps you. But there are unfortunately going to be some things that stress you, but help Rosemont and some things that maybe help you, but stress Rosemont. And I have to learn how to balance those things. Yeah. But it is a living, breathing thing. We can't just neglect that it exists for the sake of just everyone being happy and not being able to sacrifice maybe a little effort or this or that. And like, these are just things that are just going to have to naturally happen for the success of everybody. It's a give and take. There's pros yeah. and cons. It's just the way it, you know, it's the yeah. way it is. And that was like a weird concept to like think of it as like almost another person. Like it's an its own employee almost, right? Yeah. But it is, man, and, like, that's why it means something to you. And I, I wasn't saying that to be, like, a dick about, like, you know, you have to serve in order to be able to, like, truly appreciate people. But I think you appreciate what you put your time into. And then when you realize that the things that you put your time into bless or help somebody else in some way or another and also maybe make you go fucking crazy, too. But, like, it's, like, you gain that sense of, like, this is you. Yeah. And you need to do this because this is your baby, you know? Like, you, you guys, can... <laughs> have you guys ever had... Uh... A barber say thank you to uh, to to clients to you no to you for your business for like making their life good or helping contribute to a good life. I think maybe a couple. Yeah, and I think <laughs> no, was, I should remember yeah, that. Yeah. I, know. <laughs> I know. I feel like I would know. Yeah. But in, in all honesty, I'm sure they have. Or I've, I've had two like guys say party. it to me, and it like. It, it, it like blows you away, metaphorically man. brought me to my knees and yeah. just like Matt did it. I cried straight yeah. up. Actually, I do remember that. I was at seven grand and I cried. Yeah, he got through it and Matt early on like quit and was just like, I can't, I can't do this. I've been in the industry for like so long and this is making me feel like I suck and I'm inadequate. Cause he was in you know women's hair for so long mm. and he was just like, I can't grasp this. Like I feel inferior, all this. And of course, in my head, I'm like. You're making him feel inferior. Stop being a dick. And I know I wasn't. And he knew that too. He's like, dude, this has nothing to do with you. It's me. We had a chat just about like just basic mental health things and anxieties and worries and all of that. And just trying to make him feel confident and good. And I was like, stick with it, dude. Don't just bail because it's hard. Like see this through. I really believe in you. I know that, dude, you're, I'm seeing progress. Things are fine. Things will be fine. And then they were. They were fantastic. And yeah. dude, we love Matt to no end. Like, he's seriously awesome. And mm -hmm. I think when at, we were at Seven Grand and he made me tear up was, he, just, he was like making me feel like I was good at what I do when I was brand new. I worked at a, at a, at a Too Cool for School shop. Yeah. Where people were there to just do what they were doing. And like the focus was more on what you did, what you looked like cutting hair and yeah. not explaining the things, you know? So like I was shown how to cut hair, but I didn't know why, yeah. or how to do it. Yeah. Like I just watched them do it. And like that, like, I don't know. I just think with like the education thing, like I just think that a lot of barbers are told Instagram is how you get good as how you get famous. And then you just got to pick up the pieces over here. It's like, you gotta have the, You got to have the sick ass video with the turnaround and the head bop and all this stuff, you know, That's and then, hot. Yeah, dude, people teach classes on that shit. Like, people, you pay, like, barbers to teach those classes. Oh, like, I, I got you. Like, you oh, no, but they teach, like, like, Instagram a... classes in, like, shit. Like, they have, like, influencers come into the school and teach them how to do stuff. And, and it's I what think, they want, right? Like, it's, yeah, like, it's like but, what the students want. But, I mean, if you I know guess. how to dress in Stone Island, what else after that, you know? Do you know three base haircuts? Can you do a slick back, a side part, and a crop? Do you know the difference and do you know how to build build weight for those for all of those like when i'm teaching my apprentice like when i ask and stuff and i'm like these are very fun, fun, fundamental terms you should know what a perimeter is you know you should know where your occipital and your mastoid are because people talk like that when they're teaching important classes they're not going to be like the bumpy thing behind your ear you know but like you don't get there unless you put the time in yeah and so like that's why like with schooling like what else happens when you're not cool, like on the video or like stuff, like where somebody tells you to do a regular ass haircut? It's just weird. Like, I mean, I know there are students there. Like, I went to school with some mature people too, right? Yeah. Like, 
I wasn't paying attention to them because I was still drinking while I was in school, yeah. right? Like, I couldn't get it, you know, like, I wasn't there yet. Uh-huh. But, like, what about that crowd that is, like, how can we get more involved? Like, how can we as barbershop owners, like, I, would, I just wrote something down. It's hard to convince them, though. Like, we did, yeah. and we did a job fair at the Evade Academy in Denver and went there and... Like, just for... We were the only barbershop that, because they have a, so the academy that I went to was Douglas J. It's like independently owned. Um, But the one in Denver is also independently owned by a different group. They do actually have a barbering program. So like it is always usually just cosmetology, osteology, stuff like that. There is a barber program. We went, we were the only barbershop at their career fair. The only fucking one. They had 30 barber students. We had 30 people around this tiny ass table, which is like half the size of this, like a little, like, you know, plastic picnic table. Brendan decided, shout out to Brendan, decided he was going to go take a leak the moment they unleashed the hounds. Oh, boy. So then I have 30 people in front of my awkward ass, and I'm just like, ah, and I'm just like, hi, we're Rosemont. It was so, oh, my God. I was like, Brendan, come back, come back. Did your voice crack? Oh, God, probably. Hi, I'm Derek. Yeah, I think I peed on my leg. So we started chatting, and, you know, it was cool, but we were the only one there. And we had maybe three people kind of interested um, after that and kind of interviewed them. And the only one that worked out was Austin, who was, dude, he's just the bomb. He's just, he's on paternity leave right now. I would consider that amazing. He's fucking, dude, so worth it. Dude, I honestly, like with, with, I had, I had somebody cutting, cutting hair that was younger than I was by just a few months and they were really good. Yeah. Um, but I really think that like when it, when it's like, cause I've always asked myself the same thing too. Cause like I, as much as I say that I don't like it, like I really do like teaching when I do know what I'm talking about, you know? Okay. And so that's not any fun, dude. Teaching when you don't know what you're talking yeah. about. And that's but, where the money is. And it was, yeah, right. <laughs> no, but, but like I, uh, I, I just started like not being transparent and like giving too much information away with stuff, but like the dudes who like now, like beginning of the, of, of, when we started, I wanted to do all these classes there and everybody was just dragging their heels. And then I paid for one and nobody wanted to come. And so I just started doing it by myself and I started cutting hair. I started taking sheer classes because my sheer game was fucking awful. And I was like, it wasn't awful. It looked okay, you know, but like, to I was, you, you wanted yeah, to I just like, I just you knew that like, you know, in, in, in a week and a half, it's not going to look the same. And my, they're not going to slather it with fucking pomade either, you know? And so I started doing that and I started taking classes and I started asking Derek about sheer techniques and I started being like, my hands don't work this way. What can I do for this? And I was failing miserably. But there was one day where I was like, I cannot get this hair to do what I want to do. And I know that the dude next to me knows how to do that. And I just looked over him and I was like, hey dude, will you help me? And he goes, my client goes, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm asking for help. (laughs) And he goes, are you fucking serious? I thought he was mad. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, dude, hang on a second. I was like, hey, man, so this is dropping here, and this is doing this. This is uneven, and I don't know how to get that to work this way with this hair. And he's like, oh, I got you. And he's like, can I have your razor? And I was like, yeah. He's like, watch. And you know, he pulled the section out, and he showed me. He's like, there's where your fucking shelf is right there. And he just did that and took it took it away. And I was like, he's like, you know, do, do the same on the other end. And, like, everybody in the shop was looking at me yeah, learning from this barber. And I was like, dude, thank you. I shook his hand, and, like, my, my client was like, dude, that's wild. And I was like, what? He's like, then you asked for help. I was like, bro, I'm not doing it right. Like, do you want me to keep doing it wrong or do you want me to ask the guy who knows how to do it? And he's like, I mean, you've just been cutting hair for a while. I'm like, dude, I'm not. That's when you were just like, I'm well, sober, so I asked for help. Yeah, exactly. Well, 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 then when it was, well, well, then when they saw that, like, then stuff, like, I wasn't like, I don't need classes. I, don't know, I was like, dude, I've been taking, like, two classes as much as I possibly can. I've been doing stuff online. All the guys suddenly are, are interested and then when we had a friend who works at another barbershop, he's like, hey, I want to teach um, tapers and transitions from short into very long. Yeah. And I was like, hell yeah. You want to teach it at the, at the class or at the, at the shop? And he's like, yeah. So I was literally asking them. But when I told him, I'm like, hey, I'm going to take a class with Evan. And this is what, they, what it is. And they're like, oh, for real? You teach us that scissor shit? And I was like, he's going to teach it to you? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And like now all of the guys are like, who once weren't like I think that like you had kind of have to just be like yeah dude I suck too man like I'm not as good as I as, as everybody says or whatever it is but like if you're vulnerable and like you're like easy approachable like I think that that's like when I instead of just being hard ass boss or being like that's not how it's done 
Like when I'm just like, yeah, man, I fucked that up too. Let me ask this over here. You like, know, like, it's opened up more conversations for me to teach people than it has been like, what are you doing, bro? Or like, what the hell? Like, if you're just like, yo, if you want to know, like, I got you. Vulnerability in probably all walks of life, but especially in our industry, vulnerability leads to a fatter wallet. Absolutely. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Like the more vulnerable you are and open to like just not necessarily judgment, but you know what I'm saying? Like having someone critique your work and help you yeah. develop just open. Like dude, if you can do a long haircut, a short haircut or long, medium, short, and then a bald fade, right? Like, yeah. and also like simultaneously, like if you got a guy in your chair that, like where's a tie and you got a guy in your chair that is like supreme that yeah like, top to bottom right like yeah. you will never be poor yeah. right like you you will yeah. find it impossible but if you are just the supreme barber yeah. you are going to struggle vulnerability is a weird word because it's, it, it, it implies less macho or less who you are but like i think vulnerability to me is an understanding that i'm not where i need to be or that i can get better and i'm not there I need to be okay with saying that and being like, can you teach me that? Or can you do that? Like, because like that was the hard part of like getting over everything with working with you guys was that like, I'm sitting there fucking cutting across from you and Brendo and Izzy. Izzy is putting out flawless, like editorial haircuts as a, as a 45 minute haircut. Yeah. And you're sitting there looking at him and you're like, you better pull it together, buddy. Because like that guy's not going to go to you when Izzy's out of town. Yeah. That dude's not going to let you touch his long hair. When Derek's out of town, so you better, you know, and like, it was more like for me, I had to like scare myself more into it. But like, I think that like that, it's hard for barbers to admit that they don't know it all. Or they're not exactly good at everything. And it's hard to say that you're, you're only good at something too, because you say that to yourself, you're like, I'm only good at doing number twos, you know? And so like, that's like where I was saying, like with like the learning and the vulnerability of everything, it has to be on both sides because there's an understanding that like, I'm probably going to give you bad advice at one point. Or like tell you to do something that might not work yeah. right for you. And I have to be okay with like being like, oh boy, I did do that. I know that anxiety. Have you yeah. ever like turned a guy to the mirror and just had a fucking chill go up your spine? Yeah, I'm just like, I don't know how I got here or why, but like this haircut is not what I wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've only had one in recent memory and I just, I don't, I just couldn't get it to do anything cool. And what he wanted, it just didn't. It just didn't work, and it was a miscalculation. But other than that, I don't really have a lot of those days. And that doesn't – I don't want that to sound arrogant. It's just I think I finally hit a point, which is why I kind of felt so ready to do the curriculum and all that. I finally hit a point where if I don't know, I have enough – I think, like, what you said was great. You know, something really long – Long, medium, short, like ball fade. You know, like four core shapes, which is exactly what mm -hmm. we have in our. Body. You can take principles from those yes. and do anything in between, and that's the thing. It's like if you're the supreme guy, then, and don't get me started. I'll talk about it for fucking hours. <laughs> but I am watching barbering shoot itself in the foot again. <laughs> in that, it died in the '60s because no one wanted to cut hippies and cut long hair. Yeah. And now we're running into the same fucking problem where no one knows how to use scissors, Everybody no one knows how to cut men with yeah. longer hair, yeah. and they're just, and they're worried like, oh, well, if I cut their hair long, they're only gonna see them like twice a year instead of every month or every two weeks. Yeah, but what about their four other friends that exactly. have long hair that have been looking for a barber shop that cuts medium length? Exactly, do you think, yeah, like, like nothing against salons, but do you think a lot of those guys want to be in the salon environment? They wanna to come to a shop, it's just no barbers are willing to do it, and no one will invest in their own education to do it. You know what happens once a week that I hear is like, I go to a barber for a fade, and I go to a salon for the top. I, dude, it, like once a week, somebody comes into the yeah, shop that's like, dude. I didn't even know I could do this. I didn't even know I could do a yeah. one stop. I thought I'd just get a fade here and then go. Yeah. Do we, we we hear it too? And I mean, like we squash that, it immediately. We're yeah. like, okay, you can come to one place now. Yeah, because of what we do. But it 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 irks the shit out of me. It is so painful to see. It's a lot of the newer guys. You know, it's the new heads that are just like. It's like, do not read a history book. Do you not know what killed it, killed this for decades in the first place originally? Why are we doing this again in America, right? Like, why, it just, it, it, it boggles my mind and it pisses me off to no end because it's the guys that don't want to adapt and get better. And, you know, call me hypocrite. I don't do designs and that wacky shit. Yeah, do I. Uh, because I think it's a fad. And fads, to me, are, 
I don't give a shit. They come and go. But like foundational haircutting is not fat. That is like literally right. what we do, right? Yeah. And you need that foundation, right? Yeah. Like if, if you are really drawn to designs and you are going to make that your life's work, right? And you can build a core clientele somehow out of that, yeah. then yeah. fucking go. Yeah. Plenty of people out there are great with designs and do yeah. all kinds of fun stuff, right? But far be it from me to judge them. But I'm with you, right? Yeah. Like, I know who I am. I know yeah. what I'm interested in. Like, you want some cat scratches? You fucking got it, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm all day. Yeah. Um, but it, I'm with you. Like, there's a, there's a goofiness to designing that I'm just kind of like, it's just well, not like I, yeah. Plus, like, I'm not going to be 60 years old giving 17 year olds like the Boston Bruins logo on the back of their head, right? Yeah. Like, I I just I can't picture myself being that person. Well, we saw right? you know the the designs and stuff like that in the 80s and hip hop, and it was like late 80s, and then even into the like early mid 90s in the hip hop scene, and it was fucking sweet, right? It was cool. <laughs> yeah. And then now it has turned into like a bunch of just. There was a reason that there was like a almost a 20 maybe like 15 year gap between it. Things come and go. The designs, you know, late 80s, early 90s, and then they kind of went away. And then, like, they would come back recently in the last handful of years, and I feel like they're going away again. But, like, again, if you know how to cut hair well, when the bowl cut comes around, you know how to do that level of graduation. Mm -hmm. When, you know, Tony Hawk, early 90s or late 80s skater yeah. cut is, you know how to do, like, a proper square layer. You know how to do these things. You know how to work with fringe. You know how to transition. You know how to build weight. You, need, you know how to reduce weight. Those principles are things that, like, if you know those core shapes, you can go in between. And that's why earlier I said I don't really get too nervous about anything. is because I know mapping it in my head during the consultation, I'm not going to do the exact horizontal graduation that we teach in the curriculum. I might on a couple people, but I might take a principle of that haircut, and then I'm also going to, you know, use square layering for something and then I'm gonna take the fringe and do alternating subsections and create texture doing that or it's like I have this arsenal of shit because I took a shitload of classes your attache has everything <laughs> <laughs> it's like you, you call on that shit dude it's like fucking what is it Zelda it's like it's like a whole oh, little ocarina it's, got this whole thing. it's, yeah, it's the same thing pack is impressive, right? and it, it's that's, bulgy baby but I, because of that I don't I don't get nervous but i mean i did for a very long fucking time but i finally you know well this is a language right yeah. like our industry our, our skill is a language yeah. right and mm -hmm. like people that are really really adept at it right like, yeah that just you wanted to get good at something yeah. you got good at it you looked at the next thing you wanted to get good at yeah. and now it's like every skill translates to yeah. like there will never be that, yeah. there will never be a moment in time where you can't give whatever the trendy haircut is. I look at these current trends and I see these guys coming in and I'm just like, yeah, absolutely, dude, I got that. Yeah. yeah. But like, there was a moment where I, I couldn't even give a fate, right? Like yeah. I couldn't even take yeah. somebody out, whatever. And then like now it's like you put all these skills together. Whereas like, yeah, when you're a one dimensional barber, yeah. like those clients are not gonna be there forever, yeah. right? Like they are going to need something else. And if you only do one thing, yeah, right, like you are gonna hurt. Well, they have those two or three haircuts, and it's just like a one size fits all, building the exact same shape on a bunch of different heads instead of realizing like, oh, I need to lean this out. So even though I'm you know using graduation here, just above it, now I might start actually layering and like reducing weight so that it sits like this. Or I'm gonna create you know a weight line here. Again, it's there's no adaptability there. There's yeah. no there's no you're not designing the haircut for somebody when you're a one-dimensional barber you're, or hairdresser, you're just like, oh, I was taught this at a class, I'm gonna do this trendy look on somebody. But does that crop fit that face shape? Why would you put a crop on somebody that has like an extremely heart-shaped face? It's gonna make them look goofy shit, they're gonna look like fucking Mega Mind, because I can say right? Like Eddie Munster. <laughs> or Eddie Mon it's just like, right? So seeing those things, and for me, that took a long time. It's like Johnny Bob always says, like the barber's eye. It took me a while to see that especially in hairdressing, which is probably why I was always stronger in men's cutting because I could see it a little easier in men mm -hmm. than on women. But like, I didn't know what was suitable. I didn't know what was tasteful. I didn't really understand it. I just did the same haircut on dudes, you know, scissor over comb that I was taught, never used clippers. And I was one dimensional and I got away with it for a long time. And then I was like, enough. I wanted to be more than just that. And then, you know, it takes a lot of time and, you know, you're you, you know, I think the moment was for me is like I, I saw a guy 
because there's there's a bunch of different ways to build a clientele, right? There are people in this world with so much charisma that yeah. it doesn't matter what they do, yeah. oh, that yeah. people will be attracted to them. And yep. like, I am jealous of that. Like, I have a small amount of charisma that I lean on from yeah. time to time, sure. But like, y- you know the person I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, oh, right? yeah. Like, they have. I could name a few reps. Genetically, like just like different humans. Yeah. Who, like, no matter what they yeah. do, they have an audience, right? Yep. Yep. Um, but the surefire way for the rest of us to be booked weeks in advance yeah. is because we are well-rounded. Like yes. we have a depth of skills and like we are good people, right? Like yeah. we're reliable. I was just going to say dependable, reliable. Yeah. I was like waiting for you to say. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like, like showing up Consistent. every day to work is like, it, it's such a boring, like nobody, like it's people are probably game, turning off the podcast right now. Cause they're like, Oh, that's fucking boring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know? I want your rock star shit, but like right? the consistency and like, that's longevity, right? And dude, I'm playing the long game here, man. I'm not going to be a barber for four years and piss off. I'm. Dude. This is my career. It's what I do. It's all I know. One yeah. of the first things he told me one day when I was talking to him, he called me and he's like, Harry, are you going to work at the place after you're done with your apprenticeship? And I was like, I don't know. And he goes, can you answer one question? And I was like, sure, dude. I was like, what's up? He's like, are you looking to make money or do you want to be good at what you do? And I was like, I honestly want to be good at what I do. And he's like, dude, fucking right on. Like that was literally a phone conversation we had. So I just asked him, I'm like, dude, what do I do here? And he was like, do you want longevity or do you need money right now? He's like, either way is not bad, but you need to figure out where you want to go. Yeah. And like, that was honestly the moment when I was like, I really do like haircutting. And like, I want to do this because like, I had an opportunity right out of school to make $35 a haircut. And it didn't matter what the fuck it looked like at one point, you know, like, I'm also like one of those people that would probably shit their pants because I didn't know what was going on and the, the place was popular and it was filled with people. It's like giving somebody so, something too soon. And like that's like why I think that it's like important to develop those foundations and those like life skills in people. And like, even if you're just like an example to them, like all of that put together leads to like you said, a better life and a lot more satisfaction in the end. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, well, I made it through six years of my life and now I haven't done my taxes and I don't know where to work anymore because nobody wants designs or whatever it may be, you know? Like, I don't know, like that's like where like all of that kind of like for me like moves into <laughs> what makes like, what, what makes teaching fun for me and make, it makes me want to like give into like an apprentice or something like that. And then you see that and then they realize that in you and then they're, they're like, yeah, dude, that makes sense. Well, like, like you said, sometimes there's just guys that just want to do certain things and just want to like focus on that. And dude, it's totally cool, but it is really exciting when you do find that person who's like, yeah, dude, show me how to do that. Or like, you're like, yeah, dude, show me how to do that new thing. You know, like yeah, dude, a passion for the trade and also like a passion for showing up on time. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, beat, we beat that horse earlier. Yep. Big time. But yep, yep, yep. Right, the, that person though is is well. I don't want to say they're they're rare, but you know they are. Yeah. Right, they're out there, but we have to find the one that wants to be in our shops. Sure. And you know finds that enjoyment. Yeah. Right? Because the formula is kind of it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, but there are like the guy that wants to be in the barber lifestyle. That's not our guy, yeah. right? That's not our, that's not our person that mm-hmm. wants to come in one day a week, you know, and make $400 and then fuck off yeah. for until they feel like working like, again. Yeah. 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 Like that's not our guy, right? Like he, the, I, I find that barbers, uh, I say this all the time, they count pennies, not dollars, right? They're all like, oh, I want to pay the least amount of rent. And it's like, yeah. sure you do. But like, is that actually... Are you actually making money? Are you making a living, yeah. right? Because, like, I can't convince you that, you know, yeah, yeah. paying less rent yeah. makes more sense. Like, if you can't do yeah. basic math of, like, oh, well, you're paying $400 a week in rent here, but you make $2,000. Yeah. yeah, you're paying $100 a, a week in rent here, yeah. but you make $400 a week. People are chasing booth rent to the point where they're almost blinded by how much that price of the haircut will be. How how long are their haircut times in that shop? Like, are they held to a standard of 30 minutes or 45 minutes or an hour? How much are they going to make? What are their shop hours? Are they allowed to work five days or only four days? Are they given this many hours per week? Can they work overnight? All of these contingencies are like an afterthought. It's like... We talked earlier about... So like, financial literacy or lack thereof in you got, school. Yeah, you got one of your guys who's like amazing at it and another yeah. guy who could not even like, probably can't use a calculator to escape a paper bag sort of yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and it's, and that's okay. it's weird because you think that like, oh, this is real obvious, right? 
Mm-hmm. Like, so I'm going to net $1,600 by working at this shop. I'm only going to net $200 by working at this shop. Like, they might not even know what the word net versus gross yeah, means. Yeah, exactly. Right? And that's okay. I'm not, yeah. that's, this isn't an, about an insult. It's about, no. like, it's about financial literacy. Yeah. And, like, that that is a – it's one of the one of the many mountains we have to climb totally. when we're sort of recruiting people. Yeah. It's like, hey, how do I – I can't convince you this is a good job. Yeah. Right, I'm, and I'm not even going to try. Yeah, like if you haven't decided that like haircutting at my shop is a good idea, at at the very least financially, yeah, then I I can't take you much further. I used to qualify the shop. Yeah, now I want to qualify my candidates. Yeah, and I feel like that has been a big step for me because it yeah. also is another elimination factor. Yeah, right, because like people when they talk to me, hopefully, sort of understand like what my vibe is mm-hmm. and you know, I, I, I kind of mentioned that like, I want them to come in and try out. Yeah. It's a two way street. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Like yeah, if they try absolutely. out and they feel the vibe and they like it and they, they like being in a room of adults that are like earning a good living yeah. and there to support each other and help each other and learn and grow. That's awesome. Yeah. If you don't like it, right. For whatever your reasons are, right. Like, yeah. Um, that's okay too. Yeah. Right, like I want you to feel good about it. Yeah, because if you feel good about it, you're going to show up. And, yeah, know, I mean, if they flourish, flourish, right? Well, like that's re- actually really kind of brilliant because, like, why would you want to try and thrive somewhere you don't want to be? Yeah. yeah, you know, that's a really great, straightforward, and like not insulting question. Like, do you feel it here? Yeah, because yeah. if you don't, bro, like, like, like you said, like that, that will throw off the synergy of your whole. When there's not a lot of people applying then how do you go, oh, I don't think this is a good fit. And then you're like, okay, well, then there's no one next behind them. Then what the fuck do I do? And you need people. And that's kind of been this like, well, they're offering this up the street. And you're like, okay, but, and you don't want to talk shit and be like, well, I know all this stuff about that guy or this owner or that shop or, you know, what's he telling you? Where are they telling you? Like, <laughs> you because that's just, that's petty, but you also want to look out for them because you're like, yeah, what kind of like false claims are they making? They're not busy. You know, like you don't want to sound like a dickhead, but at the same time, you're like, no, but how you know do you answer that? Right. Yeah. Like, you got to let them make their own mistake. You do. You do. Yeah. But when you're like, I really, or, or even people. if it's not a mistake, you have to let them yeah. shake their own tree. I don't think there's anybody that's really excited about teaching hair properly as well, unless it's being paid to do it. You know what I mean? So many ego educators out there that do it just for the ego. And it, I think, so I like, I started education really young and then I got out of it because I was young and stupid. And I, we were talking about looking back on stupid decisions you made back in the day, but I was always, again, I knew that I didn't know like how to <laughs> fundamentally like really cut hair very well. But the whole thing was, I would go to the Veda collections that were, you know, they do like three editorial like haircuts and colors. And I would learn that and then I came back to the salon and taught it. And when you have people that have been cutting hair for 30, 40 years and you've been cutting hair for like six months out of school or probably maybe a year at that point, they're like, why the fuck would I listen to this guy? He doesn't know how to do jack shit, which I didn't. But do you know how to do, how to do this asymmetrical bob that if you part it here, it's symmetrical and you part it there, it's asymmetrical, but it still flows really well and has this like crazy razor undercut, all this crazy shit. No, you fucking don't because you've been doing the same damn haircut, long layer on everybody for the last 40 years. So here, maybe you can implement some of these like trendier ideas in with those things. And I just got shat on. I had a bunch and it was even, it was the younger stylists that were worse. It was the people that were only a year or two ahead of me that were the ones that were the most disrespectful, derogatory, and the ones that disrupted the class fucking with me, being the catty assholes, like drama queens, that ruined it. It was all of the older ones who were actually... I was more nervous of because I thought they were going to have that attitude of like this fucking guy. And a lot of them did, but we're still respectful because I think they're like, he's a nice guy and he's trying, he's giving it 110%. So like, let's at least give him the room, which I greatly appreciated. Um, but I think I saw that one or two classes that I did and I just got my enthusiasm just, just got shot down. And instead of being like, fuck them, keep going. I was like, listen to them, stop. And I did. And I, I was 19, a scared little boy. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. But bringing up education, it's like there's so much of it that is just it's guys just wanting to like tell that they can do this and do that and show off, and it sucks. There, it, there's a lot, like everyone's an educator these days. And me and Miles, the our podcast, like the recording got fucked up and we missed the whole chunk because we were going off about that about just the arrogance in education. And it's hard when you find like a genuinely good educator who 
gives a shit for the right reasons, they can change lives. But again, you see a lot of these guys, and I'm not going to name names, that I've taken classes with that are just, they fucking suck. They're terrible educators. They can cut hair like motherfuckers. They cannot convey a subject to somebody and make them better. They cannot help people retain information. They cannot, they, they're just showing off on stage. And you're like, Lottie fucking die, dude. Yeah. What does that do for me? I mean, it's part and parcel of our industry, though. Yeah. Like, the beauty industry is just like, you know, glitz and glamour, right? Like, yeah. that's, for lack of a better understanding, it's like, that's just what draws people in. Yeah. Right, like I, I don't know how many people you witnessed like beauty school dropouts, right? Like, oh, yeah. they were like, one day this girl was here, the next day she wasn't. Yeah. One day this guy's here, the next day he's not. And like, the, those hurdles. What is the number now? It's like, if you graduate from beauty school, barber or cosmetology school, I think it's three years in. It's like the eighty twenty rule, right? Like eighty percent of those people yeah. are no longer in the trade. Yeah, right. Like that is insanity. Right, like that is such an insane number to me. I think rehabs have better numbers than that. To be really <laughs> honest, <laughs> like, it, it, it seems like that though, right? And then, yeah. like, out of that twenty percent, here we are yeah. trying to figure out like what is our like. Arguably, like we had, we built successful barbershops out of that yeah. place, right? So, it, it would be it, it would be amazing to see these. Could that washout number change, right? Like, yeah. can we have an influence on that? Or are we just going to, like, that's my... Well, I think the uh, number is even worse after graduation. Like, one in five graduates are still cutting hair after five years or something like that. The amount of people that drop out, like, we'll still graduate, get a license, and then don't finish it, you know, don't move on after five years is insane. Yeah. But one thing I was just thinking of is, like, how... The, it seems like when I say the barber industry is young, it's crazy because it's, like the oldest profession next to prostitution. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, in sex work, but it's like, I feel like it is young in the sense that it died for decades and it's come back with this crazy boom. So in some ways it's young and because of that, it has a lot of young people in the industry which struggle to see through the glitz and glamour and the Instagram bullshit that is being presented in front of them even when they go to hair shows. Maddie Conrad is a great example and I, I've never taken a class with them which is unfortunate. I just haven't had the opportunity. But I have seen him do digital seminars and education. And from what I can tell, that motherfucker can teach. Uh -huh. Is he going to do some crazy editorial looking stuff that blows your socks off? No. Honestly, everything I've seen him do is like stuff that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, which is so fucking important. Yeah, two and honestly, sides, right? Yeah, and some of the haircuts aren't like I haven't seen before. But he can deliver the information in ways that I know people are retaining it. And to me, I have so much respect for him for that because I, if you have a dude that's doing this crazy shit, but they can't retain it, worthless. If you give them things that are just like, you know, you might not be teaching them the, the most advanced shit, but if they can walk away and retain even half of it, that is a huge win. And he is an educator. And I think, I don't know, I just, there's not a lot of people out there that, in my opinion, in this industry, people struggle to see through all the bullshit to to get to the guys like him. He's one of those dudes that is, is huge and still does deliver on education. Yeah. You know the expression, um, this person has forgotten more than I know, sort of thing, right? Like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, the uh, DJ Muldoons of the world, right? Yeah. And it's hard for them to come down to the level of somebody who's, because most of the people that are at these yeah. classes are the, young, Advanced, are the really. young minds, right? Yeah. Like, no, 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 I'm thinking like, People that go to Matty Conrad classes. Oh, I thought you were talking about the, the DJ. Like, I, I see his like pictures a lot of like salons, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. probably the people in cosmetology school that yeah. never have used their clippers, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he's teaching them how to do four on the sides. Yeah. And like finish with a nice soft neckline. Yeah. Things like that, right? Because like that is what they're going to do. Yeah. You know, I've been to salons and watched like. A, a man be incredibly satisfied with an incredibly mediocre haircut yeah. because, like, he loves the girl that's cutting his hair, uh -huh. loves the person cutting his hair, right? Yeah. And like, you know, that girl has definitely been to that, you know, that stage event yeah. to see and be marvelled by a four on the sides. Yeah. But people like him and like Kevin Lutchman and some of these guys, they don't when they're on stage and they're doing these things in these classes. They're not just. There's a difference between teaching and explaining what you're doing. And when you're teaching, you are explaining what you're doing, but you're teaching. And I guess it comes back to the retention thing. And 
when I look at some of the better educators out there, that they're making people retain what they're telling them. And even though we just yeah, talked about like, Maddie is really, like, full, you know, it's because they just know how to be it's teachers. Connection. It's its own skill set as being a teacher. Yeah. I, I think though, like what makes like the things that I've learned from and the things that I've seen people like, is it like, again, it goes back to accessibility. Like do people feel comfortable talking with you? You know, and like, I think the people that know how to drop like what they are and, and like what they're doing yeah. and they make themselves less important than, than everybody else, yeah. I think is usually where I've learned. Like if I took a class with you, and I never knew you. I think I'd be having a good time from just the conversation we've had here because we've had a couple of jokes, chatted, and like I know that like you're gonna like not lead me down, lead me down the wrong way. Sure. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I think a lot of people are scared of people because of their reputation and they don't give it a chance. And like other people are like, yeah, this is who I am. But when you like, you know, like shake hands and kiss babies, so to speak, you know, like you say, hey, dude, how's it going? Or like you talk to the to the student who's at a, a show. Or something like that. I, I think that, like, from when I've asked other barber students and people who they've, they've successfully learned something from, it was always just like, I don't feel dumb. Like, and I don't feel stupid asking a question. Like, well, it was like opened, opened up to me to where, like, I was, it was clearly set out, you're going to make mistakes. Well, one thing you were like, that piggybacks off of is what is that difference between showing and educating is reading the entire audience and teaching to everybody. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of educators almost want to say names <laughs> that I know are just showing off and trying to out dazzle the most knowledgeable person in there sure. and be like, I'm better than even the best person in this crowd, which we talked about earlier. If you're the best person in the room, fuck off. Yeah. I'd rather teach a class than have somebody come up to me and be like, yeah, you could, you could work on this. I was like, okay, cool. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, but one thing that John did that was great was he's teaching all this stuff. He's teaching, like, I think he was doing a razor fade mm -hmm. on Dane's, like, brother, I think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, um, And he was teaching all these techniques and whatever, and there's probably people in the, in the audience that, like, don't do a lot. There's one uh, girl that worked at a salon who's, like, just started doing clipper work. Uh -huh. Some of that might have been way over her head because she's kind of just, like, getting into this, and she works in a salon that doesn't really do education about, you know, bald fades and stuff like that. Some of it might have been over her head a little advanced. He, but he also talks to people that were just out of school and like how to hold their scissors properly. Yeah. But he didn't do it in a demeaning way. He didn't no. do it in a condescending way. And he did it tucked in with the inf other information. He's like, all right, so like, you know, we're going to scissor home. Da, da, da. Also, make sure when you're, you know, just like worked it in smoothly to where it wasn't like, you idiots don't know how to do this stuff. It was worked in very, very well. And he made sure to talk to novices and middle of the road at like experience level and people that are very experienced with like a diverse haircutting background and he did it all at the same time and that was super impressive and that's the kind of thing where I took, I've taken a couple classes now with Kevin Lutchman and it was the same thing if you were newer you were never looked down on he immediately knew how to talk to you as a newer barber or hairdresser and if you were really advanced he knew how to push you to get that little bit of extra out of you to make you a little bit better yeah. um and Maddie, again, I haven't taken a class like one on one or, or in a small intimate group setting with him, but from what I've seen online, he does the same thing. I think that's one of the big things for me that makes an educator good. And that's what I try to do with our guys in the curriculum is, you know, when they have advanced questions, get them to that next level. And when they have really, they're like, oh man, I have a stupid question. I'm like, dude, it's not a dumb question. Yeah. Be humble, ask it. I'm not going to think you're stupid. I'm not going to think you're inexperienced. I'm not going to think you're bad at barbering if you ask me a simple question. Simple questions lead to really complex answers sometimes. And if you ask me a very vague, what well, you think is stupid question, I might be giving you a piece of information. And not, I answer that question, but I answered four other questions that are probably going to be coming next. And I saved us both time, and I gave you this very thorough answer that helped you answer a question maybe you didn't have today, but you would have in two more days, right? Sure. And it's just... To me, that's what makes people, it's, it's the same thing with service, right? It's yeah. like, go, they're your guests, go above and beyond. Make them feel comfortable and take care of them, right? Mm -hmm. Teach them like you want to be taught. They want to know everything. Give them everything you have, right? Don't just show off. Mm -hmm.